live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here is your host, Jeff Kelly. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. You're watching The Cube, and we are live at Splunk Conference 2015, 2014. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, looking forward to next year's show as well. Um, joining me now in this segment, we've got Donnie Perkholz, who's an analyst with Red Monk, and John Rooney, who uh, is Director of Developer Marketing with Splunk. Guys, welcome to The Cube. Thank you. Thank you. So, one topic we've been hearing about over and over on theCUBE uh, with the various Splunk customers that have come on is this concept of DevOps and Splunk enabling um, those organizations to rapidly develop and uh, deploy and redevelop applications to kind of serve their customers. Um, why don't we start, John, with you and, and talk a little bit about Splunk's view of the DevOps movement. Sure. And, and why that's important to kind of your, your customer base. Sure, well I mean I think if you uh, begin with some of the fundamental principles of DevOps and you know Donnie and Red Monk's done a, a lot of really great work in that space, the idea of um, you know, in order to be more responsive, in order to uh, you know, kind of turn the feedback cycle very quickly, it's something that GE Capital talked about in the uh, keynote here at, 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 uh, at, at the conference. Um, what, what, what you essentially need to do is, is transform some of the traditional stovepipe roles between operations and development. So it's no longer the idea of, hey, it works in my, in my dev environment, I'm trucking it over the fence, and there's this very you know, different set of responsibilities, different set of concerns, in many cases, different set of uh, tools and, and systems between those roles. From a Splunk standpoint, now obviously there's a, there's a big part of that that's cultural, there's a big part of that that is practice-based, um, but ultimately, there, there is now a, uh, an emerging set, a pretty varied set of, of tools and systems that are, that, that are sort of driving these processes at our customers, whether it's a tiny startup or a gigantic enterprise. Uh, and from our standpoint, it's all machine data. It still outputs machine data. It still um, you know, provides the, the, the type of uh, opportunities for us to correlate that data, provide insights, provide real-time analytics into seeing, okay, when this machine, when, you know, when someone checked in code into uh, a code repository here that kicked off a build on a build server, that's a that's an event. That's a machine-driven event that you can you can put into Splunk and have that view overall. So we think about Splunk as being an enabling tool, and it's something we've seen in our customer base. So so maybe we take a step back, Donnie. Uh, and again, welcome to the Cube. Thanks for coming on. So we hear about DevOps a lot, uh, and, and as I mentioned, we've had a number of Splunk customers on that kind of talk about DevOps but we've had a hard time really pinning it down. I mean, can you give us a little bit of a DevOps 101? I mean, from your perspective, how do you define DevOps? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, there's a lot of different ways to think about it, and I think John put a really nice summary in that they fall into two camps. You've got the tooling, and then you've got the culture, right? The organizational side of it. How do you make it happen in a company? And, you know, there's a lot of disagreement within the DevOps community about, you know, which one of those should come first, which one should come second. Does the the tooling catalyze the culture, which is my belief, or do you have to change the culture first and then bring in the tooling, um, which you know some other people believe. And I think the easiest way to just sum it up in one sentence is you take agile software development and you carry it through to production. Mm -hmm. right? You take that same idea of iterating rapidly over short cycles and just carry that iteration cycle a little bit farther down the road so that you're iterating not just from you know, development to a completed build, but from development through test to operations such that if you want to, you could even deploy it to customers. Mm -hmm. And the bigger picture view though in my mind and where we start talking to, you know, some businesses about it instead of just talking about how technically fun it is, is you think about, okay, who's on the other side of the developers and who's on the other side of the production support? And it's the business and the customer. And so from the business level, and if you hear you know, Adrian Cockcroft, who used to be at Netflix, talk about this, he'll tell you, you know, the real benefit of a DevOps approach using continuous deployment is you can iterate more rapidly than your competitors, you can ship fe features faster, and you can learn based on the customer receipt of those features. Mm -hmm. right? So if you're being agile software, you build something, but you still, at the end, you're not shipping it until 18 months later. 
in many cases, right? You're just doing agile development and not agile delivery. Mm -hmm. And so you're not able to learn and iterate on the response to those features. So what's driving this? Is it, is it the consumer side where, app, where uh, consumers with our smartphones, we're expecting the applications to be, to be upgraded and up, updated frequently to, you know, when there's a bug found, we want that fixed right away. Is that driving it? Or, or what are some of the things in the background that are pushing DevOps into the forefront? Um, I think you know every time a new movement comes like this in technology, it tends to be driven by changes in technology itself, mm -hmm. right? So if you if you look at configuration management, for example, which is one of the key tools behind DevOps, what you see is that there's generations that come out in response to things, right? So CF Engine came out in 1993; it's 21 years old, and yet DevOps was not an idea until like 2008, right? Um, so that came out, but it never really picked up because there wasn't the requirement for transient scalable infrastructure. Then suddenly, you know, 2004, 2005, here comes the cloud. Mm -hmm. And you have this whole new generation coming out to cope with, you know, high scale. Um, you have to have everything maintained in code because you can't hire enough admins um, or you're, you know, you're hiring admins for peak instead of for typical use case. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't work out financially. So, you know, I think a lot of DevOps has been driven by the need to respond to what's happening out there in the marketplace, mm -hmm. right, from the point of view of, of the cloud um, in particular. So, talk about the role of data and, and, and developers being data savvy. In, or, in, in other words, all the data that's coming back to them from their applications that are out in production, um, they've got to be able to sift through that, analyze it, and, and, and determine where do we need to you know, develop new solutions to, to fix these problems. Mm -hmm. Is that a new role for the developer? And how are they adapting? Um, I think what we've seen is developers have always loved data. Um, we publish quite a bit of data-driven analysis, and every time we do a piece with data in it, it gets orders of magnitude more traffic than anything else we do. Um, so they've always loved data. The problem is they always they haven't always had the tooling to work with it and to understand it. And you know a lot of that's changing with you know the whole, the whole data science thing, right? You've got Hadoop and big data, but you're also empowering developers. And you know this is, I think, something that John could talk about some, yeah. which is you know Splunk's ability to empower developers to sort of democratize access to this data. Because the thing that's happened sort of in the pre-DevOps days, and even with companies that have shifted to a DevOps approach, is the data is still very siloed and inaccessible. Mm -hmm. So that developers want the data, they want to understand you know, how customers are treating their code in production, what kinds of crashes are happening, but in many cases that gets rooted back to ops and stops there, and the developers mm -hmm. never hear about it, or maybe they don't even have the resources to deal with it because they're on to the next project. Right. Um, so, you know, the data is out there now, the tooling is starting to happen everywhere, right? It used to be that the web always had a lot of access to data, mobile apps was much more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's changing, a lot more instrumentation exists so that you can get the data. With DevOps tearing down all the silos, you can get access to the data, and you know, they've always wanted the data. The problem mm -hmm. is, is doing something useful with it. Right, so John, yeah, expand on that a little bit if sure. you could. The, the, the idea of breaking down these silos, as, as Donnie put it. Uh, yeah, and I, I think, you know, in all honesty, I think we just happen to be uh, luckily in the right place with our, the paradigm of working with Splunk. The initial paradigm of working with Splunk, which actually you know, predates the, the official you know, birth of DevOps in 2008 or so was, oh well if the data is all in one place and the developers have access to it, you don't have to you know, tie up a sysadmin for, to have to SSH in a machine and grab the logs. So the data is already there so the developers can have access to production logs without, without infringing on the security or access controls of a production system. That was something that was sort of just always built into the mental model of Splunk which just happens to dovetail really nicely into the notion of when there are shared responsibilities and there are shared tools between uh, development, QA, operations, uh, you know, you, the, the, the flow is very different, the, the, the responsibilities are different, and um, you know, we just happen, that was always sort of built in, so the developers don't have to nag somebody, the, the, the data is always right there, and you can empower them with that data. Um, and, and again, the acceleration of things, I, you know, I'll go back to what Donnie said about the cloud, I mean, I think, um, from my perspective and what I've seen, I think the cloud has been a huge driver of breaking down the barriers between ops and, uh, and, and, and traditional development. If for no other reason um, that you know, kind of the canary in the coal mine for the cloud was in many cases developers bypassing IT 
to spin up you know, instances in mm -hmm. AWS or Rackspace or Azure or whatever it was. Um, so all of a sudden, they're in the infrastructure game, even if they're not in the infrastructure game that explicitly. And then just the nature of cloud, you know, when you, all of a sudden you're architecting applications for the, for the cloud in sort of a pass model where you're separating kind of the code layer with the data layer, well then that's, you know, all of a sudden, as a, as, as a production engineer, you're now aware of ac application architecture. So I think all of these things have contributed to sort of blur the traditional lines between those roles. So, so what steps are you taking uh, to really cultivate the developer community? Sure. Um, to, to attract them to Splunk, to, to reach yeah. out to them and kind of build that community uh, momentum, which you need, anytime you're trying to attract developers, you need to get the community yeah. involved. Yeah, I mean, I think there's sort of two ways we think about it, um, and you know, Steven Sorkin, who was here earlier, uh, I'm sure talked a lot about sort of our partner community and the kind of traditional, when people think of a developer, developer ecosystem, that traditional sort of uh, Apple, Microsoft, you know, I think Salesforce is doing a great job with it, the idea of having other people build apps and run, essentially run businesses off the platform. And that, that's one thing, uh, you know, Steven's talked about where, you know, we're going to really ramp up our efforts there. But I think kind of the first order uh, place where we think about our developer community is our customer community, right? So, uh, the, one of the great things about Splunk is, uh, you know, it, it really is a, a multi-purpose platform. So when there's Splunk in an organization, it can add value to your security professionals, your IT, and developers. And all of a sudden, as Splunk becomes more well understood and more adopted in an organization, what we've seen traditionally is it moves upstream in the life cycle. So maybe some, somebody, maybe somebody buys some Splunk. For, for traditional troubleshooting, hey, my site or my system is down, I need to figure out at what layer of the stack there's a problem. That's just kind of classic IT troubleshooting. But as it moves up, becomes more proactive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's say you're applying some security use cases, and then all of a sudden, well, why not use this as part of release management? Why not use this to, to monitor our QA environment or to monitor outputs for soak and stress testing, the things that you know, really lead to the handoff between dev uh, to production all the way to the beginning of the process. I mean, at ourselves at Splunk, um, you know, part of our regular cadence of, of, uh, of our, you know, our big product release process is we have a, a series of meetings every month, or a, a meeting every month, and, and the first part of every meeting every month is data that we splunk out of JIRA, basically say, how are we, how are we progressing on, 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 at the task level? How, how are we looking at in terms of tasks and bugs and, you know, and, and displaying that data, pulling out of JIRA and Splunk? So, as you can see, because it's really a system of, of interconnected uh, you know, tools and systems that output machine data, evented machine data, it's very well suited for what we, kind of the core of what we do at Splunk. Mm -hmm. And you know, among your customers, you, know, you mentioned that kind of land and expand strategy yeah. that Splunk has, and we've heard from pretty much every customer we've had on yeah. theCUBE talk about that. But from a DevOps perspective, and Donnie talked about, does the technology come first, or is it the tools yeah. and the technology, or is it the culture? Uh, what are you finding among your customers? Are there certain customer types that are more advanced when it comes to adopting a DevOps model? And, and what's your take on, on Donnie's question? Is it the tools that come first or the, or the culture? And how do you see that balance? I mean, I think it's, I would, uh, you know, I, I do think that the, the, the notion of culture, and you see a lot of folks talking about, you know, you can't just say you're DevOps, you have to live it, you have to empower people in the right way. And I, and I, and I would no way want to underscore through the importance of culture. Um, but certainly from what we see, a lot of it is, you know, a lot of it is tooling based. If all of a sudden you're moving to uh, continuous integration or continuous deployment, or you start working with a puppet or a chef, um, these things naturally lend themselves to, uh, uh, you know, to folks on both sides of kind of the, the dev and, and ops aisle. And a lot of the ops aisles, are, they're, they're familiar with Splunk. They know how to get, they know how to get logs into Splunk. They know how to, you know, they know how to get data into Splunk, so it's just another view into, the, into that piece. So I think for us, uh, we may have a little bit of a, of a bias in identifying the tools piece, but again, I wouldn't want to underestimate the, the cultural, the traditional, you know, throw stuff over the wall. You know, there's a lot of work that needs to get done there. And you know, we, we're seeing it, again, it's sort of like cloud or big data. In some cases, in some of our larger enterprise customers, it's tops down. It's like, all right, we need to figure out how we're going to DevOps it up. Uh, and it's yeah. and it's and in and, and a lot of cases we're just in the right place in the org to, to facilitate that. Yeah, Donnie, what's your take on that? Getting that tops top down, um, you know, C level support for a DevOps approach. I mean, do, do, does C level get it? I mean, it sounds to me they would understand the value, but do they even use the the, the language DevOps? I mean, do they? Do, does there need to be more education in terms of you know C level to understand? You know, this is how you actually implement being extremely customer focused. 
I think it, it's a spectrum, right? Like there's this William Gibson quote about, you know, everybody is somewhere on the spectrum. Some people are living in the future, some people are living in the past, some people are somewhere in the middle. And it's the same thing with companies in that, you know, there are some CLO people that absolutely get DevOps. They know what the term is about, they know how to do it. Um, but that's not where most of us are, mm -hmm. right? Most of us are somewhere in the middle where, you know, they've heard about this term, they're not quite sure exactly what it's all about. Um, but, you know, the funny thing is, outside of IT, they have a very good grasp of the ideas as soon as you explain what's behind it. They're like, oh, so we should be more collaborative, we should cooperate on these things. Um, instead of being angry at the people over in finance all the time, maybe we should bring one of them on our team and send one of our developers over there so we can start working on these things together. As soon as you start talking about the ideas behind it, um, people completely buy into it and they understand what's going on. But DevOps, the term itself, um, is missing some of that implied meaning to people who aren't deeply inside what's happening at sort of the new wave of IT. Yeah, I mean, it would seem to me the, the value that DevOps delivers, being very um, focused on the customer, you know, providing on a regular recurring basis more value to them in the, term, in the form of you know, the applications that they're using and the services that you provide. That, to me, would seem to resonate with a C-level person. You know, they may not know the term DevOps, but that, to me, should resonate with them. And if you can get them, them on board, that's one way to start moving the culture. Um, and then you've got to bring in the tools, of course. Exactly. And I mean, in fact, a lot of times the most challenging C-level person to get to buy into this is, is the CIO because they're the one who understands what's actually got to happen down at the bottom level and say like, wait, so we're going we're gonna to ship code 80 times a day, but isn't that pretty risky? You know, isn't that going to mean like, oh, that means we could crash our customer systems 80 times a day. Mm -hmm. And you really have to break it down and think about what the risk looks like. And you know, my point of view is you think about this, all right, imagine you're delivering to customers once every six months. Um, chances are good that there's one critical bug in there somewhere and you're going to have to roll it back and wait till the next delivery window for everything else that went along with it, mm -hmm. right? It all comes in one big piece, you get all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Whereas you think about it from a, a continuous delivery point yeah. of view and you can ship one little micro feature every day and make things a little bit better, have a little bit you know, more competitive solution than the other, other companies in your market and you've got the same overall level of risk, but you're spreading it out such that you can get the benefits of the code that doesn't have critical bugs in it. And you know you can roll back the little pieces that do and fix them and ship them the next day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know that requires some, some, this is a change management challenge as much as a technology yeah. challenge and an education challenge. And, and, and John, we're, we're close on time, but I want to give you the last word. So what sure. is Splunk's approach? Uh, we talked a little bit about this, about developing the developer yeah. community. Um, but you know, going forward, when we're at Splunk Conference 2015, yeah. where do you hope to be in terms of uh, I mean, the I, DevOps? Perspective? Yeah, I, I think you know, as we you know, we we haven't talked a lot discreetly about the tooling. I think you know, one thing that you know Godfrey talked about in, in the keynote is the idea of it's a great platform. It's widely extensible. The platform I've been working on DevPlat stuff my entire uh, time here, but it'd be great to also have some solutions. So we know that there's a discrete set of tooling that lots of folks use. Um, that are really popular, so it'd be great to have some, you know, whether uh, we build them or our partners build them, make them available to the community to say, hey, if you're using this as a build server, if you're using this as a, uh, um, as a uh, code repository, here's, a, here's an app or here's an add-on or here's a you know, connector for that to make it really easy. Because a lot of our customers that are doing really exciting, cutting edge stuff uh, from a DevOps standpoint, they, you know, they've really dug in and they, they've built it out themselves and we're great. We've been supporting that in a lot of ways, but in, as in any sort of uh, technology adoption curve, you know, to sort of move up faster, you need to uh, make it a little bit easier. So I think that's what you'll see from us. I think you'll, you'll start to package some, of this up, uh, package some of this up a little bit better, and as more of our customers, more of our organizations that we work with, um, you know, as they look to, to sort of uh, step into DevOps, we want to have stuff ready for them that's fully baked. So I think that's, that's where we'd like to go. Right, great. Well, John Rooney from Splunk, Danny Burkle, Red Monk. Guys, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE. Uh, important topic, we're going to be you know, keeping an eye on this over the next 12 months, and you know, we'll be back here next year, and we'll, we'll see where we stand. So right. um, keep it right there. We're going to be right back. Uh, we've got the rest of the day live coverage here at Splunk Conference 2014 in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with our next segment.